This is George from High Tech Legion. If you're watching this video, you probably own or are contemplating owning one of AMD's new uh, Hawaii GPUs, the R9 290 or 290X, and you're probably already aware that they are two of the most powerful GPUs that have been released to date. Uh, you're also probably aware that they are two of the hottest running GPUs that we've seen and have presented some challenges in terms of keeping them cool. This makes them prime candidates for liquid cooling. Now, obviously, the uh, ultimate way of cooling these is going to be with a full cover water block. With prices coming down on open loop components and XSPC offering some incredible uh, inexpensive open loop kits, it's a perfect time to get into open loop cooling. Today we're going to take a look at the XSPC razor block made especially for the R9 290 and 290X uh, to be used in an open loop and can go anywhere from an entry level kit to the highest end uh, enthusiast liquid cooling setup. Now, looking at the XSPC Razor, I do want to point out that we're going to be looking at two different pieces today, even though they are used in conjunction with, with each other. First off, we have the block itself. Second off, we have the backplate. Backplate is available separately and is used in conjunction with the block. Many feel, feel that, obviously, a uh, large card, it's going to add a lot more stability, even though you've got good um, stability, of course, and uh, structure with just the block itself. Also, add some great eye candy in the case. I mean, face it, it really looks phenomenal when it's on the back of the card. And we're going to see exactly how it looks in a little while. But as you see, very simple piece. Backplate with the XSPC logo, all black. And it's a matte black, not um, a shiny black. But let's take a look at the full cover block itself. The R9 290 290X Razor on the top, or I should say what is going to be the bottom, has black brushed aluminum, as you can see, with the XSPC logo. The contact plate itself, all copper, as you see here, with your co uh, direct contact for the GPU, as well as the RAM and the VRM. VRM is a huge issue. Uh, most of your other solutions, besides a full cover block, are not going to have any type of VRM cooling. Here you are getting active VRM cooling, as you see, with the actual block going... Uh, over into the contact block, so you are getting liquid over the VRM. So you are going to get advanced liquid or uh, VRM cooling from the liquid itself. Now, on the back of the contact plate, all copper, like I say, is a stainless steel plate. So it's not relying on the acrylic to make a seal. It's a full sealed unit on the acrylic. This is going to give you more stability and more reliability. No worries about the acrylic bending, warping, or anything of that nature and causing a leak. So you've got a nice solid sealed unit right here, as you see. So you're really not going to have any worries as far as leak. Now, moving up, you do see it is a nice thick acrylic plate that is going to go on the bottom, and it is clear, as you see here. Reason for that being, the razor can accept two LEDs, three millimeter LEDs here and here. What that will actually do when it's in, it will light up, and this is actually the way you'd be facing, it'll light up the entire acrylic itself. So you're going to get a glow around the entire acrylic. It comes with two uh, three millimeter blue LEDs. However, uh, XSPC makes just about every color known to man uh, available as replacement LEDs, or you can use any standard three millimeter LED that you so desire. Now, moving over to the in and out, you've got seven ports. They're all uh, G1 quarter, of course, as you see here. Two on the top, two on the bottom, two on the side, and you've also got one in the front, which is nice if you're not going to be doing a crossfire uh, or you've got your uh, pump res up front, uh, anytime you're going to the front of the case, as you can see, you don't need to go down and around. You don't need to go up and around, out and around. You can go straight out. So you've got a good selection there. And of course, it includes the fittings to block up five of the ports and just leave you with the two you're using. But most importantly, of course, like I say, if you are going to be doing crossfire, you are ready for it. It's set up uh, to do crossfire as well very, very easily. So it's a really nice looking piece, very nicely constructed, as you see. The brushed aluminum, very, very well done. And the overall look is absolutely fantastic. But really, of course, the most impressive part being down here with the uh, all copper block, with the stainless steel plate on top, in the active VRM cooling, with the actual jut out 
uh, of the liquid chamber going over the VRM, as you see right here. So let's take a look at what's going on inside of the uh, Razer R9 290-290X block. Getting a look under the shroud, first thing you see is the active VRM cooling. You can actually see the triangular section which extends over to the VRM to get active cooling over to the VRM. So you do actually have, like I say, good cooling for the VRM and it's active. It's not, you know, passive with just, um, you know, a little heat sink thrown on there. Now moving inside, you see you've got the water channel that completely covers the GPU as well as the RAM. So you're getting, you know, full water contact with uh, your major components. And taking a closer look, you can see that you've actually got the micro channel over the um, GPU itself. That's down to half a millimeter now. Uh, XSPC and most vendors were using a one millimeter. They have put it, uh, brought it down to half a millimeter. So you do get more surface area. So you do get better heat dissipation from the GPU itself. So really nice looking inside as well as outside. Included with the XSPC Razor Block, first thing we find, very simple two-page instruction manual. The uh, installation of the block itself is actually much easier than most people would anticipate. We're going to take a look at that in a couple minutes. And all of your thermal pads, small tube of thermal interface material for the GPU itself. Your LED uses a four-pin Molex, as you see, two three-millimeter LEDs five G14 plugs in uh, black chrome, and screws and washers for uh, mounting the block. Now, if you are gonna be using the back plate, it does come with its own instruction manual where you'll follow the instructions in the uh, mounting of the block up to the last step and then replace it with the final step here. And also uh, included with the back plate is a set of screws and washers also, which are a little bit longer, obviously, to go through the back plate, as well as the tool for uh, fastening them. So let's take a look at exactly how it goes together. Once you've got your reference cooler off of your board, first thing you want to do is put on the thermal pads. And they do come with plastic, which needs to be peeled off, and then put into place as per the instruction manual. You've got a pad for the VRM, as well as pads for the memory, and the GPU will use thermal interface material. So we'll get all those pads on. Now you can see all the thermal pads in place. Very important to note, uh, when you're doing your thermal pads, there is plastic protective coating on both sides. Make sure you take both sides off. You don't want anything, uh, any of the plastic melting. Also, of course, if it doesn't melt, which it probably wouldn't, the uh, plastic coating will cut down on the heat conductivity. So you're going to decrease performance. Just make sure you take both sides of the plastic off. As you can see, I put some thermal interface material on the GPU itself, uh, actually significantly less than what it looks like um, on film. You just want uh, just enough to cover when uh, it's compressed. So very much like you would with um, a CPU. Now, next we're gonna move over to mounting the block itself. And we're gonna do that uh, a little bit backwards. You wanna actually place down the block and then put the card onto it, lining up your screw holes. As you see, make sure your thermal pads stay in place. Lift up, keep it in place. Now, if you are not going to be using the back plate, obviously washers would go on and just the screws would go in. But we're going to be using the back plate, so I'm going to show you how to attach it with the back plate. Now, the first thing you'll want to do to make your life easier, once you've got the block in place, I'm using the box here, but you can use a book, magazine, anything, uh, just to elevate it so you can actually have the PCI slot, or uh, PCI, I should say, uh, expansion slot over on the side, laying off the side. This is going to allow it to sit flat and make it a lot easier to work. Next thing you're going to do, the red washers, you're going to go around, put them all into place over all of the holes. 
Now the next step, you need to be very careful. You want to line up and very carefully place your back plate, making sure you don't disturb the washers. And place it straight down so all the washers stay into place. Now, a little gentle pressure, go around and put all of your screws just into place. Don't tighten anything. This will just keep the washers in place so you don't lose any as you move anything around while you're doing your tightening. And you just repeat until all of the screws are into place. With all the screws in place, you can go around and actually just get them all started by hand and down to just about where they're level with the uh, back plate itself. You're now going to start with the four screws surrounding the GPU itself. And using the included Allen, just tighten them up. Of course, using an X pattern, little by little. Moving around the GPU. Once those are tightened up, you want to move around and tighten up the rest. Now you don't want to over tighten. You want them just snug. You don't want to bow the board. So keep an eye on that as well. Uh, especially over uh, tightening down at the end, you can definitely run into bowing the board if you're not careful. Uh, you don't have as many components down there, obviously sitting flush like the GPU. So you do want to keep an eye on that and make sure you don't bow the board. So you move around, tighten everything up and you'll be good to go. Now with the back plate all tightened up, as you can see, Got a beautiful solid piece here. Um, really, really solid, a little heavy, but not too bad. Definitely not gonna get me sag, obviously, even though this card is absolutely immense. Um, really, really good looking. This is the angle you're gonna be looking at inside the cases, you'll see in a few minutes. So you've got a great look going here. It was a very easy installation. Now all you, that's left to do is put your fittings in. Um, obviously you'll put your plugs in in the spaces where you won't be using fittings. I know for a uh, fact I won't be using that. Put it in, easiest way to tighten it up, of course, is with a coin um, or large flathead screwdriver, whichever way you decide to go. Always make sure your fittings are tight before you put any water to it. Uh, you don't want to over tighten your fittings. You just want to crank them down, get them good and snug so that they are watertight. So good to go. And we're ready to put this into the loop. XSPC uses a very distinct look to their components and the razor uh, block absolutely fits it. As you can see here, really, really nice looking in the case. Uh, you've got the back plate. Even if you don't use the back plate, it's going to be a great looking piece with the acrylic sides with the light shining through as you see. Now, one of the things uh, that made this really simple in putting it in the loop, I had talked about it before, you've got seven fittings here. So you can come in from top, side, bottom, out, top, side, bottom, or uh, out or in as the case may be from the side. Now we're using a bay res, so that actually made things very easy. We got a straight shot over and didn't have to loop around in any way, shape or form. We got a straight shot over. Great flexibility there with seven fittings. Now today we're gonna to test it with two different loops, uh, which are actually gonna be pretty much the same loop. First off, uh, I get asked all the time, can I add a GPU to an XSPC uh, Raystorm 750 kit? And the answer of course is yes. Uh, we're going to answer that today. I'm going to use an off-the-shelf Raystorm 750 uh, EX240 kit first off and add the razor in. Uh, next, I'm going to replace the radiator with the new RX360 V3 and see how much we pick up from using a 360 millimeter radiator uh, replacing the 240. So we're going to be looking at it uh, with two different uh, systems, but two very, very simple systems. We're not going outlandish here in any way, shape, or form, and we're going to use the 750 Bay resin both. So let's get a look at exactly how it performs in these two loops. Okay, so let's start out looking at the uh, RX360 loop. Uh, obviously, the idle temperature is absolutely phenomenal across the board, but uh, obviously idle is not what we're looking for here. Now, taking a look we're loading up the CPU and GPU simultaneously. Uh, this is not simply loading the GPU up um, running firmark or anything. We're running both at absolutely full load. 
Now, we tested the Razer with fan speeds of 800, 1400, and 2400 RPM. So keep in mind, I mean at 800, it is dead silent, 1400, barely audible, and obviously 2400 RPM on those Cooler Master jet flows, it does get a bit loud. But now taking a look, I mean, even at 800 RPM in dead silence, you've got a full 51 degree drop on the GPU from the reference cooler. Uh, you've also got about 24 degrees on the uh, one VRM and almost 50 degrees on the other. So, I mean, you've got really uh, just phenomenal cooling. And of course, as you turn up the fan speeds, it drops. Um, but you're talking about just fantastic temperatures across the board. Now, if we move over to the 240, uh, this, once again, like I say, is simply you're adding the GPU into the EX240 uh, 750 Raystorm kit. So you're looking at $149 kit plus $119 on the uh, GPU block. So you're looking at right about $270 for the, you know, the full cooling system. Now, looking at that, once again, uh, even, you know, the idle temperatures, uh, once again, phenomenal, of course. Now, moving over to load, which once again, we're loading up the CPU and the GPU simultaneously, you again have really a phenomenal drop. You know, you're talking about a 44 degree drop on the GPU uh, from the reference cooler. Uh, you're also talking about a five degree drop if you're trying to do dual CLCs with the CLC running, you know, at full bore. Um, at 800 RPM where it's dead silent, uh, you know, and as you go up, as you see, I mean, you get much better VRM cooling than you do uh, using a dual CLC and obviously just, you know, not even comparable to the AMD reference cooler. So you're keeping everything in check, even using just a simple kit. Uh, obviously going to give you a lot more headroom. I mean, very impressive, you know, that 1400 RPM number, you know, 47 degrees, it's topping out on the GPU, 82 degrees and 33 degrees on the VRM. Uh, just really phenomenal temperatures. Next, let's take a look at what it does running Firestrike, uh, which is going to basically simulate you know, high-end gaming for, you know, long periods. And as you can see, I mean, the temperatures are just phenomenal. I, VRM never goes over 64 degrees. Um, you've got your your uh, GPU topping out at 47 degrees. So, I mean, this is, you know, a, a very, very heavy gaming program. Simulates, you know, what today would be the highest intensity games. So you're going to get fantastic temperatures across the board um, using the Razer R9 290-290X block. So really a very, very strong showing. Okay, so summing up that overall performance, I mean, obviously the Razer block was absolutely phenomenal in cooling down this 290X. Um, the 290X, of course, does have its heat problems, but it kept both the GPU and the, both VRM uh, in check completely. The temperatures were absolutely phenomenal. Now, we really didn't baby this. I mean, we had a 4770K in the loop running at 4.4 gigahertz. Uh, you had the uh, R290X, which is, you know, the hottest running GPU on the market right now. We used a simple bay res. We used, you know, very simple radiator. And the Razer block was absolutely phenomenal all the way around. Now, on top of the performance, it looks great in the case. It's very, very versatile. Uh, as far as the lights go, you can change it to any color you like. It's a standard three millimeter, so you can match any theme you're going with. So you really get some great flexibility with the uh, R9-290X block. Uh, from XSPC. The craftsmanship and you know workmanship on it, very, very nice. Love the fact there's a steel uh, stainless steel plate, not uh, the acrylic as the backing to the full copper contact block. Love the active VRM cooling. Obviously, it does a phenomenal job in keeping the VRM cool. So you've really got a fantastic piece here and obviously worthy of a High Tech Legion Editor's Choice Award. So once again, the uh, XSPC block, Definitely top of the line piece should definitely be on your must list. If you are going to run a 290X, especially if you're looking to overclock, you're definitely going to get uh, some more headroom out of there using a full cover block. And the XSPC Razor is definitely at the top of the list.